Okay, so um, just watching some of this press conference here, and uh, I'm going to say some things now that is going to upset a lot of people. You're not going to like it, as is often the case when something is true. Um, you know, but uh, it's it's you know what I believe to be true, and um, there's a lot of reasons for that. So um, <laughs> this originally started uh, the the GoFundMe was uh, to Merrill Lick, I understand. Um, who was a, you know, a Maverick party person, a Western separatist. Um, that party uh, ran candidates only in areas where it wouldn't hurt the conservative party. It had uh, Jay Hill installed as, as a leader after, uh, after Peter Downing was ousted. And uh, Jay Hill was a Stephen Harper guy. Now, you know, whatever that means to you is whatever it means to you. Shortly after that, BJ Dichter gets involved. B.J. Dichter is a conservative party operative. B.J. Dichter is the guy that was the LGB Tory campaign guy. He was, uh, you know, the manager of, of many, many prominent uh, um, online political commentators in Canada, YouTube personalities and this kind of thing. Um, and now, now, now he's on there. He's doing all the talking and he's saying the liberals, the liberals, the liberals, liberal this, liberal that, liberal this. Well, let me tell you this, uh, BJ and everybody else out there, in case you forgot, because I didn't forget, the conservatives said absolutely zero this entire time as businesses were destroyed, as the mandates were brought in. You know what the conservative party said? It said it's time to get vaccinated. It's time to, you know, do what you're told. And now all of a sudden the conservative party is your friend, is it? Is this the same conservative party that brought in the, you know, the, uh, you can be held 14 days without charges now? Uh, the same one that sold out our energy industry to the Chinese and, and, and signed the FIPA agreement with Stephen Harper and all this kind of stuff. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Is that what's going on? Um, you know, and he's admitted to, to, to talking to the Liberal Party. He's like, we're talking to other parties and not the ones that you think. Who do you think they're talking about? They're not, I know for a fact, they're not talking to, to uh, Max Bernier or Randy Hillier. So who are you talking about? Okay. This uh, Dagny character is involved now. And, and that person is uh, Marco Mendocino's campaign manager. That guy uh, was just on, I just watched him uh, last night or the night before, calling us all terrorists, essentially, in the House of Commons. So the government's got its hooks into this, you know, six ways from Sunday right now. And um, people need to be aware of this. They are going to, they're going to, they're hijacking this populist movement as a, as a means to, uh, you know, uh, ride the wave into power. I mean, listen, I like Pierre. I like a lot of what he says and what he does, but... Uh, let's face facts here. Where were you six months ago, Pierre? Where were you a year ago? Why did it take you two years to find a spine and find a backbone and say something about uh, what's right and what's wrong in this country? Why did it take you this long to, uh, to apparently care about the rights and uh, you know freedoms of Canadians? Because, oh, look, look at this big populist movement I can all of a sudden conveniently take advantage of. Where was the Conservative Party then? Crickets, nothing, nada. We had nobody. What we did have was Max Bernier and Randy Hillier this entire, entire time. Entire time. And everybody else working at the PPC for two years and longer. Okay? They've never changed the message. They've never changed the platform. They've been saying the same things this entire time. And that's why I've been supporting them. I don't like liars. I don't like two-faced, uh, you know, schemers. And that's what the Conservative Party is. And that's what it always has been. And now you're seeing a Conservative Party operative hijack this entire thing and make it seem like, well, it's the Liberal Party. And if you just get the Conservatives in here, we got to get rid of these Liberals. we got to get the Libs out. Got to get the Libs out. Are you kidding me? We just did this in Nova Scotia. We just did this. Remember Tim Houston and the, we're going to vote it because we don't want the Vax Pass. And what did you get? You got a Vax Pass. These legacy establishment politicians are not your friend. They don't care about you. They care about themselves and they don't see this. They, uh, don't listen to what they say. They don't see this as like, oh, what a beautiful thing. These hardworking Canadians, whatever. They don't, they don't see that. They, say, they see opportunity. They see an opportunity to, to seize power for themselves and they're taking full advantage of it. And they're taking full advantage of all the people out there that are naive to who these people really are and what they're really up to. Now, I'm probably going to catch a lot of shit for saying this. I don't care. It's true. Uh, say whatever you want, but uh, don't be surprised um, when this is probably what's going to happen, right? They're probably, Pierre is I'm definitely, I mean, he's going to be the leader of the Conservative Party. They're going to win in a landslide election probably here shortly. And then, uh, you know what? Well, there's been some, you know, things had to be, you know, negotiated. Well, we're going to have a digital ID now. It's just the way it has to be to get the economy back on track and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, that, that party is filthy with, uh, bureaucratic money, Saudi money, foreign money, Chinese money, billionaires. It's, it's garbage. 
Okay, and again, the proof is in the pudding. Oh, he's saying all the right... Yeah, now he is. Where were you this whole time? Two years. You know how many of my friends committed suicide? You know how many people died? How much damage has been done irreparably to the economy? Police are arresting teenagers. All, all the, you know, beating people up and... Where were you guys? Because it wasn't politically advantageous. It, there wasn't any opportunity in it for the men. But now there is. And now they're showing up to pretending like they're your friend. The devil wears a suit and tie. <laughs> 